And maybe in this point in your life, you do know it all in this stage. But I guarantee the next day you're going to learn something new. The next day, the next day. It's about being open to that. And for me, again, continuous improvement, which is a mindset called Kaizen. Kaizen, for me, I have that tattooed on me, which is change for improvement. It's always having that mindset that it's the growth mindset, being a visionary and going, I'm going to live my life to the fullest by achieving things that I can. And at the same time, and this is what I've had to learn through the process, is being able to stop and smell the roses, being present and not being so future focused and just living in the now, feeling alive because you could strive to achieve all these fucking things, but that's not going to be that. That's not going to make you happy. You're just going to constantly be sacrificing and people do that. I see that as um, a lot of people use it as a sense of um, what's the word? It's a coping mechanism. They might be going through something emotionally they're not fully aware of it or they might be aware of it but they don't want to think about it so they drown themselves in their work they set all these fucking goals they burn themselves out and then they burn themselves to crisp that they're forced to deal with their shit and i say that confidently because that's happened to me multiple times like literally multiple fucking times my ass has been humbled guys jesus was like baby girl i'm gonna show you the way so it you know when you go through all those experiences, you purposely want to hold yourself accountable. You purposely want to check in because you don't want to go through that again. So you're like, fuck that shit. Oh my God, I'm feeling a bit anxious. Why am I feeling anxious? Let me sit down with my thoughts and my feelings before it manifests to something bigger. So we're on a roll right now, guys. I appreciate you guys. I, I just came on here like, you know, I haven't been alive for a while. I'm just going to eat, show y'all what I've been doing. But I appreciate you guys. Please tell me. Um, so the topic of conversation that we're having is what's your insecurity? You know, I've shared mine um, and I'm happy to share more. Uh, but let's work through it. You know, it's, it's important to have these conversations. And again, if you don't want to say it, absolutely fine respect that but i want you to think about in your mind what is your insecurity what do you want to work on do you want to get better with that or do you want to learn to love it and accept it because you only have two choices actually you got three you can either hate yourself and continue to grow this negative stigma and mindset around it or you could accept it and embrace it or you could change it that's your three options so let's keep it simple stupid you you build you choose that and then you build the path from there <clears throat> <clears throat> Bonjour. No, I'm not recording. I'm not. Oh, thank you guys. You guys are so cute. But please, yeah, write whatever and I'll respond to that and I'll talk about it. Whatever it is, you don't even need to admit that it's your own security. You just put the topic out there and let's talk about it. Again, Johnny, it's okay. You've been rejected six times. I've been rejected 150 times. In work, in relationships, in life. Heck, I've even rejected my own self. Yes, I've rejected myself many times. It's fucking normal. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, can we spoil one? My guy, I appreciate you. Let's talk about this, guys. Okay, being cruel. My mind is selfish and cruel behaviors from people. Now, let's break that down. Selfish and cruel behaviors from people. There's a tool in psychology, and they call this the circle of influence, okay? Look it up if you need to. And if you've ever worked with a life coach or a well-being, anyone that does that stuff, even a psychologist, but mainly coaches will do this, they will get you, if you have a very negative thought process and you're really festering that negativity in your life, what they will do is they'll sit you down and they're gonna say, all right, you've named X, Y, and Z, I want you to fill in this circle of influence. And essentially the circle of influence, um, sorry, 
Yeah, circle of influence. What that does is it narrows down what's in your control. So that's your inner circle. And the outside layer is what's not in your control. And specifically for your comment there, people saying shit about you is out of your control. You cannot alter someone's perception of you, okay? People watching this, I have 88 of you watching right now. Some of you might be looking at me, watching me, hating on me. You might be fucking saying shit about me, right? But then some of you might be like, fuck, saying good things about me. The moral of the story is I don't give a fuck. Why? Let me hear you, let me tell you why. Because your percept, that's out of my control. What you think and feel about me is completely unrelated to what I'm talking about. If you said to me I'm ugly, I'm not, I promise you to you, I'm not going to even think about that comment. If you said the worst things, I wouldn't, even if you said your mum's gonna die in seven days, I'll be like, yeah, cool, all right, cool, great. It's got nothing to do with me. And when you learn the concept of the circle of influence, when you start to infiltrate all these negative thoughts, you sit down and you mentally, okay, put things in a box and go, okay, this is in my control. My control is what I say to myself. My control is what I look at myself and what I'm saying to myself, my control is how I react to that. Because let me tell you another thing about psychology, right? When we go through certain traumas in life, okay, think about any type of fucking trauma in your life. What you will remember, the feeling you will remember is how you reacted to that, right? I've met through my line of profession, I have met people that have gone through the fucking ringer. And I mean ringer like amputations. I've had people that have lost people. I've been I've dealt with rape victims. I've dealt with people that have been bullied and harassed. I've dealt with a long line of people that have been tortured, mentally and physically abused, right? And within the line of people that I've dealt with, you'll be surprised how many of those people you look at their circumstances and they're so fucking positive. And you know why? Because when you're dealt with a problem, you choose your reaction. And if you choose to hate, scrutinize, beat yourself down, that's what you're going to remember. And you're going to jump to that point in your life and go, fuck, I'm really like, you know, that time was really shit because da 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 da. What you're remembering, and this is our cognitive thinking this is how our brain is function this is human behavior it's tied to how you felt because how you reacted to it well you can get a fucking motorbike accident get both your legs amputated and then you end up in the fucking paralympics and you go that's the best thing that's happened to me it's all the reaction so just remember that right just remember when you're going through a tough time if you're watching this and you're you're doing it tough and you know if you're on my live right now and you're still watching clearly you know there must be something you know you manifested me i manifested you right now there might be something going on in your life where you're not happy with it and it may not be going what you think is in your favor but i challenge you to look at that situation and look at it from desi come inside sorry my dog sorry and look at it from a perspective of going okay what can i what can i learn from this no matter how bad the situation is what can I actually fucking learn from this? And choose to learn. Always choose growth. No matter how hard it is and the pain. And I, guys, I, I'm telling you, if you're feeling this right now, I fucking feel this pain. I get it. I get it. I know how hard it is, right? But when you go through those moments, this is where you choose your fate. Am I going to react to it in a negative way? I'm already beat up. I'm already down in the fucking dump. Am I going to beat myself up for this? Or am I going to choose for a better day, right? And in that moment, I tell you, even if you have fucking zero strength, you choose that, I promise you, the way up is there. God is looking over you. God, universe, whoever your higher power is will look at you and be like, I put you in this position because I wanted you to be strong. I wanted you to choose to be vulnerable. I wanted you to cry. I wanted you to be aware of what you're going through so that way you could get better because this is where I want you and this is where you're at I need you to get to that level right but it's not going to be the same way that you think it's going to be okay and absolutely and fuck John let me tell you something one thing that I've learned through my life right 
and anyone and by the way if you're in sydney hit me up if you're going to see Eckhart Tolle i'm going to see Eckhart Tolle his book the power of now has fucking reformed my view my view and perspective of life right and the whole concept of the power of now is living for this moment this moment right now you watching me what can you fucking learn from me if you're sitting there being a hating ass bitch well that's on you babe one you're wasting your time two i actually don't know what you're doing um but if you're sitting here and you're like fuck what can i learn from her even if you're hating on me right now and you're like fuck fuck this bitch what, what does she know i want you to look into yourself and go why am i hating on her oh that's right i'm projecting my insecurity because i fucking hate myself you know what i mean take this opportunity to learn from it learn from the learn from every aspect in your life because i think as humans we have the tendency to forget and you know a lot of us value security we like to be comfortable but again that is human nature we are our thought process you know just how we're wired is to go for the easy option right but those easy options are not going to push us to the next level is if you see if you idolize a certain version of yourself or a type of lifestyle or whatever the fuck you want you're not going to get there by sitting there and imagining it and going oh, i want to manifest it but you you're sitting on your hands no you need to get up and do the fucking work if you want that body you need to get your ass up go to the gym if you don't have that mentality get a fucking coach if you don't have the money for the coach get a fucking job <laughs> there's literally no excuse the only excuse it's coming from your mouth notice that it's not everyone else's mouth it's your own mouth and we could be the biggest critics but then we could also be the biggest fucking haters to ourselves and haters to everyone else and especially when there's someone that's hating on someone else straight away it's not a flex at all it's not a fucking flex 10 times more if you're hating and you're hating from like an anonymous account you can't even show your fucking identity and i say this with confidence because i am someone and i've always been like this right <clears throat> i am someone that if someone physically came up to me and said i don't like you i would be like thank you for sharing that i know that's counterintuitive and you're going oh my god you'd thank someone you'd praise them for not liking you yeah i actually would because it takes a lot of guts to go up to someone and say i don't like you and I'll be like, I respect that. Doesn't mean I want to be your best friend. And mind you, some of my friend, some of my friendships have started off as I didn't like you. I thought you were this. I thought you were that. But then when I got to know you, you're actually this. You're actually that. And again, perception is key, right? If you guys go on my Instagram right now, okay? I challenge you. Go on, if you go on my Instagram, again, you don't have to follow me. I don't care about that. If you look at my fucking Instagram and you go oh she's like this she's like that cool that's fucking great but that's not a reflection of me that's just my highlight reel honestly instagram and i was having this conversation with my mate today i said i just post the best photos of me that's purely for my eyes you know how many times i look at my f i go fuck yeah i look good there i don't do it because i want people's validation and some aspects there is a little bit of that but for majority of it, especially when I'm feeling low and, you know, someone saying, you, you look beautiful, it's a bit of validation, but it's not to the biggest uh, perception that, oh my God, I need someone to validate me. It just feels good, right? Um, but yeah, like my Instagram is not a reflection of me. And let me tell you something as well. I went on a date with a guy and I hope he's not watching this. <laughs> anyway, he's seeing a new girl anyway. So. Um, but I went on a date with a guy and... I met him through Instagram, okay? He took me out, like, fucking fine dining. Like, this guy was a complete gentleman, like, such a sweetheart. Ticked all my boxes. And when we were sitting there, he said to me, he's like, you're a lot different than what I thought. And I was like, what do you mean? And he's like, you're just really different from your instagram and i said okay like what the fuck do you mean is that a good thing or a bad thing and he's like um i didn't think you would be this confident sorry and at that point 
I knew what he was talking about because this is not the first time I've been put as a trophy. And what I mean trophy mentality is guys have dated me or guys have, you know, put interest in me because of the way I look. They look at me and they think, oh, she's hot. I want to, I want to get to know her. Well, not even get to know me. It's like, I just want to be with her because she's fucking hot. And to me, it's so, it's fucking not a flex. Another guy I saw, but when I was younger, right? I remember, and this is one of the moments where I realized how badly objectified I was as a woman. I was still, I was like, what, 18, 19, right? And this guy I had just met, he was like, beautiful. I, I was so obsessed with him. He was obsessed with me. And we we're sitting down talking and it was his birthday, right? And we we're at a club. And then he just gets up and starts walking. I'm like, okay. And he's like, come. And I was like, all right. So I'm walking to him. Mind you, he's walked 10, five, he's like gone. He's standing there with his mates. There was probably like four or five of them, okay? And I was like, um, okay, can you imagine that? Like five guys just standing there watching you walk towards them, staring at you. And I started to feel a bit anxious, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm moving my dress down and I'm just kind of going, okay, like what the fuck? As soon as I walked up to him, you know what he did in front of his mates? He slapped my fucking ass. He fucking slapped my ass. And I remember as a 19 year old, 18, 19 year old, coming to a realization like, wow, is that what you think of me? It, like, and I remember in that moment, and I've never felt that feeling before. Like, I've never been, I've had guys wolf whistle and do all that shit, whatever. I paid it no attention. But for someone that I was interested in and that showed interest in me, and for him to do that, it was literally, it felt like I was a dog on a leash and he yanked me with his chain. Um, and in that moment, it's like I went into submissive, like, okay. And let me tell you right now, I know this guy has come in and out of my life. We are not together. No, none of that. Very toxic person, but being objectified that way is horrible. And I don't wish that upon anyone. And again, I could talk to you about many, many instances in my life. I've been harassed and look, I'm not, I'm not playing victim here. Okay. I'm just sharing with you my experiences because again, we how we are as people, how we become our character is through our life experiences, right? Um, our personalities develop as we get older, but the character is through layers and layers of self-experience, right? And for me, um, I have been, st I've been stalked. Literally, guys, I've been fucking stalked. It took me years to recover from that. I've been stalked. I've been harassed. I've been bullied i've been sexually assaulted i've been all the realms of that i have been through that and that's why now as an independent woman and mind you when i say independent i mean i've got my own home i have my own car i have a full-time job in a career I've, I've got everything on my own that's my baby girl down there my dog i have and i say this with confidence because i didn't wake up to all of this I have worked my ass off through my whole life to get to where I am and I'm very proud of it. And for me, when I see women and ask any of my friends, right? And my friends, they're nothing short of 10 years. I stand by my fucking friends and I stand by not just women, but men. You know, if a man could open up to me and say, hey, this is what's going on in my life or, you know, I need help fucking oath I'll be there and I say that as a peer as a friend and saying I get it you know I know it's tough but I have every faith that you'll get through it and if you're watching this right now I have faith in you that take me as an example take whoever you want in your life as an example that these days that and I welcome 
tough days because those again you have to choose in that moment am i going to grow from this or am i going to weep am i going to sit here like a victim no you're not going to get anywhere you're just going to pro- you're going to prolong whatever you need to learn just fucking take it take it by the head and just fucking run with it you know what i mean and if you make mistakes good even better anyway sorry i'm going to tangent let me read your comments male friends oh my god okay guys my beautiful women here and again if you are a woman watching me right now please comment i'm going to follow you because again i'm all about women empowerment hold on um oh you guys are so sweet there's so many messages jeez i sorry i've just been talking and talking Yes, never give up. If it's important to you, if there's a will, there's a way. Period. Again, what I like to say, and this is how I live my life, this is literally my life philosophy, act with intention. Otherwise, everything you're doing without intention is just a waste of your fucking time. Let me tell you that. You're wasting your time and people's time. Okay, sorry. There's so many messages. Let me go from the bottom. CC, Hi, babe. Okay, I'm going to follow you. You are beautiful. Oh, thank you. Okay, I'm following you, babe. Beautiful. Who else? What's my zodiac sign? What do you guys think I am? I'm curious to know. And Tevin... Me being single for the rest of my life? No worries. Let's talk about that too. Like, the concept of being single. I feel like now there's a lot of development on it. People are embracing being single. But for the longest time, you know, for people being single, it's like, oh, don't worry, you'll find someone. Oh my God, you know, it's okay, just hold on there. Like, it's the worst thing, babe. People that do that, they're coming from an insecure place. They rely on their partner for validation. And Desi, come here. Come here. Do you want to go toilet? Poo poo? Wee wee? She wants to poo wee. Um, if someone said to me, are you, are you afraid of being single for the rest of your life? No. Because I am truly in a good place in my life where I actually love myself. I've accepted myself. I know where I'm going and I'm fucking excited. I wake up in the morning excited for life. And that's why I have such good energy and I have a good spirit because I actually am one within myself. I'm one within myself and God. So I trust in God's journey. And I know, and th- again, when you're a high valued person, you already know that for you to attract your, um, what's the word for it? For you to attract someone like minded, they're a one percenter, babe. And there's a lot of people ravaging around that low pull where they'll just accept anyone and anything. And I'm not that type of person, right? I don't, I don't give a fuck. (laughs) I don't care. Like I, I love being single. I cherish it. I love it. You know why? Because I'm not going to ever have this time back in my life. Once I eventually meet the love of my life and we have kids, you know, all of a sudden my responsibilities are different. So this is the time in my life where I actually could be fucking selfish and do whatever the fuck I want. I'm not on a dual income. I'm not paying any. I am zero debt. I I don't live paycheck to paycheck. I put money away. I'm able to take myself on beautiful holidays, go out with my friends, have nice dinners, buy myself beautiful things. Again, this is my beautiful home. I live by myself. I live in a beautiful suburb by the water. I did that because I could fucking do it. And if you're watching this and you're single, don't give yourself that. (laughs) I'm single. I can't find the love of my... Babe, you are the love of your life. You are the love of your life. And you'll find someone that they're the love of their life. And you're going to build... The love is going to be like fucking next level. And see it like a percentage, right? If you're at 100% capacity, they're at 100%. You you conform together. That's 200%. Where if you're 50%, they're 50%. That's only 100%. And then what's going to happen? The scale's always going to tip. But if your cup is always o- overflowing and full, 
you'll never have to rely on that person for love you could respect them and this is where insecurity comes from right when we don't love ourselves we begin to rely on someone here's another book another plug so if anyone's read the mastery of love by don louise re read it guys i've read that and it's the concept of fear versus love and how that gets fucking mixed up right and the simple concept he tells a story i'm not going to go into the story um, but essentially if you rely on someone else for your happiness that's the moment when the relationship's over doesn't matter if you're together or not you should never rely on someone else for your own happiness because not only are you sucking them fucking dry which is completely fucking selfish you become lower and lower and they're dipping with you and there'll come a breaking point where they'll realize i am fucking exhausted trying to take care of you you need to take care of yourself goodbye and look not to pry but i kind of see that in some tiktoks like i'm not gonna say there's a very famous used to be couple that have broken up and he's living his best life not talking about it you know you could really see him coming into his own person and she's still trying to get his attention someone for their happiness and you saw that if you know who i'm talking about i'm not going to name drop you if you see their develop like their relationship you could see the persona is different like he wasn't like that you see him now he's such an innocent beautiful free spirit and then when in the relationship he had to act a certain way yeah and i say that because i've been in that position too Am I a licensed therapist? No, I'm not. See it as I'm your big sister. Um, I am studying um, essence of psychology and what I do for work, I deal with um, injuries specific. Um, so I used to be a specialized case manager. So I dealt with um, all types of psycho um, psychological illnesses and trauma adjustment disorders things like that um so yeah not only have i learned from my own experiences i've learned from the experiences of people so you will never hear me preach anything that i'm not aware of <laughs> i'm not that type of person i ain't gonna sit here and be like blah 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 and i've never experienced that i've never done anything i haven't dealt with anyone like that you'll never see me talk about that Okay, where are my other ladies at? CC baby, I followed you. Any other ladies, please drop your name. I will follow you. But yeah, sorry, my zodiac sign. Did anyone take a guess? Aries, no. I'll give you a tip. I am close to Aries. My birthday's coming up. No, I'm not a Gemini. Oh, Brian, that is so sweet. I am doing well. I am feeling really good. And honestly, I'm so glad if you've been watching so far thank you for being here like this is a safe space i'm not here to judge you and if anyone else is here to judge you again fuck them think of your circle of influence right babe um th see this as i'm talking to you directly if you ask me any questions or if you want me to share insight i will respond to you if you want to be a cunt or comment on random shit i'm not going to respond to you period <clears throat> What degree am I doing? So I'm finishing my undergrad in um, business. So I'm majoring in management. Um, I'm going to take a little break and I am going to finish my psych degree. So either that or I'm going to go for my MBA. We'll see. <laughs> I look like I'm full of emotions. Babe, opposite. I let him out. I am a healthy wellness queen, okay? I 
um, I journal my thoughts and my feelings and I share it openly. I don't bottle shit in. I used to, but that's when it became really unhealthy. Um, where now I could freely express myself because again, I'm secure within myself. I have nothing to hide. So yeah, Aquarius. <laughs> All right. I am a Pisces. Yes. Oh my God. I agree. So I am doing two psych electives at the moment. I'm trying to smash out all my electives with psych. So I am doing psychology and health. Um, I did a thesis on CBTI therapy with insomnia. So I just completed that over the weekend. And the amount of fucking research papers I had to go through and statistics, studies. Oh my God. I wanted to literally neck myself. <laughs> um, not literally. Sorry for anyone that's trigger warning. Um, and then the other one is psychology and behavior. So understanding why we do certain things with the environment. Sorry. Behavior and the environment. Psychology in the environment, behavior in the environment, something like that. So I did a thesis about recycling. Um, and the case study is on my own practices and how I believe is um, why I do that stuff. Whatever. Don't want to bore you with that shit. But yeah, it's a mind fuck. I get it. I get it. Trust me. And no, I never want to be a licensed psychologist. Let me tell you why. I don't want to sit there and listen to people's problems. <laughs> And for me, one of my pet peeves is repeating myself. So if I sit there and I am giving someone advice, for example, majority of the people that go to therapy and counseling, a big majority of them, uh, they're going through a divorce, a breakup, some type of relationship ending. Um, and I can't sit there and then t listen to Karen talk about how her partner cheated on her and she took him back and you know, I tell her advice of what she should do or whatever the fuck. And then she just keeps going back and back and back. I, sorry, I can't, I can't, can't do that, babe. <clears throat> but with my line of profession, um, doing the psych will help me actually be a specialized practitioner. So exciting times. Um, and again, I had a conversation with my boss, which I am someone that, trust me guys, if I could also give you any advice, find a mentor, find someone that's done it already, find someone that's experienced, that, you know, ha shares like-minded values, whatever it is, and learn off them. My boss, I came, my job, which I'm only quite new there, um, I came in with the intention to find a leader to lead me in the right direction, to help me. Not a manager that's gonna tell me what I can and can't do. Someone that will encourage me to make my own decisions, will support me and mentor me. And I am very fucking grateful that my boss is so fucking supportive. We sat there and we started mapping and he asked me questions that I haven't even asked myself me explore situations and circumstances I hadn't even thought of so if I could help and direct you find and find a mentor and if you don't have people in your life I get it seek them I didn't have him in my life until I looked for a job with the intention of finding a leader I didn't care about the role I didn't care about all that stuff I needed a, a, a need a leader Oh my god. Hold on. I need to go get my um my um thing. Hold on. Sorry guys, I forgot that I hadn't finished my protein shake. <clears throat> but yeah, please drop topics you want to talk about. And thank you for all the kind words. Love you guys. Hello. What should we talk about? I felt like we covered so many topics so far. Um, <clears throat> Good morning. 
Yeah, tell me guys, drop a topic, let's talk about it. Let's have an open discussion. What shall we talk about? Thanks for following me. Thank you. Let's, okay, well, relationships. All right. Let's talk about relationships, but that is such an open topic. What do you want to talk about with relationships? Um, when it comes to politics, I'm not going to comment on that. We all have different views. Same with religion. So why do nice guys finish last? Ooh, okay. If you're one of the beautiful women watching, please, I want to hear your opinion. Why do nice guys finish last? I disagree um i just feel like it comes down to your approach at the end of the day women want a nice guy right women want a man to treat them nice a woman wants a man to be able to prioritize her and you know give her the love that she needs and the whole stigma behind um nice guys finish last it's just their approach in my opinion you know, if a guy doesn't, one, if he comes in with a weak approach, like, hey, how are you? You don't know the girl and you just slide in her DMs and you're like, hello, how are you? You're not going to get anywhere, babe. <laughs> you need to, you need to have a strategy. The first impressions is always the lasting impressions. Um, personally, for me what I would advise a guy to do is get to know the, f observe the female. So for example, if it's through social media, see how she responds. You know, if, if for example, you notice, don't comment on her beauty. This is where guys fuck up. They straight away go, you're beautiful. You're this, you're that. To a woman, that's not going to be, that's not going to do much for you. I promise you, there's probably going to be a lot of men telling her that. Unless she's really insecure and she's looking for someone to complete her. Unless you want that type of relationship, that's different. But if you want a relationship with a quality woman, you need to be different from the other guys. And what I mean by that, for example, look through her feed. Say if you notice something that, you know, you notice is sentimental right let's say you know hot put this hot photos after another or whatever like that um and then you notice like you know her with her cat or her dog or whatever fuck and you met and you message and you're like your dog's so adorable when did you get her i guarantee 